Welcome, No DQ Galaxy, to the No DQ Review. Here we are with another great edition of the No DQ Review, and I am Virtue with the esteemed panel, and I see Aaron Rift, Jeff Meacham, and once again, TJS, Tyler Joseph Smith. Greg Cherry is very, very busy today, so we let him have the night off. How is everybody doing? I'm going to start with you, Aaron, and then pass the buck. I'm doing great. It was actually a slow news day, so I took advantage of the situation. I headed out to the coast. It was also very nice on the coast, and Oregon was about 70 degrees, at least in the Portland area. Coast was like 60, but it was still really nice. Um, so I had a good day, and now it's time to get to work. It's a really weird day because I was having fun earlier. Well, I'm still having fun, but now i got to get to work. Now it's all about business. It, it's so funny you say it's a slow news day because compared to compared to you know Wednesday, any day would be a slow news day. It was crazy yesterday uh, Wednesday with uh, with the two passings and everything. It was it was a very very weird day. It's been a weird week in Hollywood, and everything with people passing away. But we're good here. We're getting to work, getting things done. Virtue's got the panel going. Oh, excuse me, the review going. I forgot about the panel today. And TJS with us, Tyler. What is up, my friend? Oh, not much, man. Uh, just been pretty busy with college work, and um, it's been a it's been a good week for wrestling, I'll say. Um, eh, for the, the most part, yeah. The two superstar shakeups were were good, but we'll, we'll get to them. We'll get to them. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, All right, well, let's get this thing started. And unfortunately, I hate I hate starting this way, but I, I do want to talk about the passing, and to me, very very sudden and unexpected of Bruno San Martino. Aaron, like you mentioned, I saw you tweet. The guy was healthy. Uh, I, I don't know what details have come up. Uh, well, I mean, he appeared healthy, put it this way. So I didn't even know he was sick. And, and again, 82 years old in the wrestling business, that's a pretty old guy. But nonetheless, let's talk about our thoughts, reflect. Jeff, I want to start with you because you you might have – you're the historian here at No DQ. I, I, I am. When, uh, yeah. when I think of Bruno – I think of Madison Square Garden, and I could care less if people say his sellout record isn't true. Dude, if you if you almost sold out Madison Square Garden for 180 consecutive times, you're a legend. So the longest champ in the history of pro wrestling, I mean, right? Eight, and of al course, al almost, almost eight full over. years with one reign. That's, you know... We, we, we all can sit here and talk about that we liked Hogan when we were kids or the Warrior or Savage or Cena or, you know, whoever, you know, you know Austin. Who, without Bruno San Martino, nobody is sitting on this video right now, period. Bruno San Martino led the WWF to where it was in the 60s and 70s and allowed Vince, Vincent J. McMahon to pro propel his business into the next, into the next century because we, here we are in 2018. Here we sit. Now, I will say, Virtue, that you are you are correct in me having knowledge that a lot of people didn't know because I will I will say this. A friend of mine um, who is actually our driver at the Child and Family Center here in Santa Clarita um, was acquainted with Bruno. He was, he was friends, with his, friends of his years ago, many years ago, and they've talked on and on. He was actually in and out of the hospital the last couple months. So it was oh. a matter it, – it, it, was, it was one of those things where it was, it was still sudden, but he was fa falling ill – Quick, more quickly yeah. than he used to. Now, I will say it was ironic that he passed because just last week, for my son's birthday, we received one of these in the mail. Oh wow! Wow! So wow. it's like it's like here he is. He's sitting right here, and okay, okay. Well, we'll get to meet him, and we'll get. And now it's it, it's still signed. Don't get me wrong, but it would be cool to have a two Dylan on there for sure. So it's it's very. Surreal. I mean, when you think about it, you know, Aaron and I are the same age. Virtue, you're in the category with us as well. One of the major first ladies of our era passed away, Barbara Bush. You yeah. know, if if you were a fan of sitcoms in the 80s and 90s, you loved Night Court. Harry Anderson passed away. Um, the gentleman from Full Metal Jacket, Gunny, passed away. And then, you know, also with Bruno's death, we had Paul Jones. Yeah. So yeah. And it, it, it's been it's, it's been a very rough week for. Famous people, I guess. Some but. San Antonio fans said the Spurs head coach Greg Popovich, his wife passed away yesterday exactly. too. Exactly. So it's just it, it's 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 a rough sports entertainment week for sure. And um, I will just say that um, I I was fortunate enough to 
you know, get get to know of Bruno's history now that he that when he was in the Hall of Fame the last five years and we got to see more of his stuff. I am grateful to Triple H for bringing him back into the fold and allowing his legacy to be what it has become the last five years, rather than as the guy that went on Donahue and trashed Vince. That's so yeah. God bless you know p- people crap on Triple H, but let's let's keep it real, Tyler. <sighs> Well, you know, uh, before there was uh, Hulk Hogan, before there was John Cena, before there was The Rock in Austin, before there was Roman Reigns, there was Bruno. Um, He was truly uh, a pioneer of the wrestling business. Uh, Like you guys said, longest reigning champion in wrestling, period. Uh, Longest reigning uh, WWF champion, or maybe it was WWE, I'm not, or it wasn't WWE at that point, but what was it, uh, seven years that he was champion? Almost eight from from May of sixty three until February of seven uh, January and of seventy one. When did he lose the title, Jeff? January uh, January eighteenth, nineteen seventy one, to Ivan Koloff in what was the wow. first major <gasps> air sucked out of the garden because nobody could believe that Bruno had lost. And then of course he got it back two years later, a, a few years later after the reign of uh, Pedro Morales pa- uh, had gone away and then he reigned for another four years so you know four thousand forty days nobody's gonna touch that ever ever there's no way unprecedented and uh he was the second ever uh wwf champion yeah. and all the time he would sell on madison square garden it's just a record number uh, i'm not sure the exact mm-hmm. number i think it's it's over 100 for sure uh this guy he was just a true true pioneer 2013 hall of famer and I was really happy to see him go in. Uh, Aaron, what are your thoughts on the passing? Well, yeah, I was a bit shocked, of course. And like Jeff said, he was in the hospital for a couple of months. So something was going on. And it just goes to show, no matter how hard you train and how well you take care of yourself, nothing is a guarantee, unfortunately. There are people that can be chain smokers all their life and live to 95, 100 years old. So nothing's a guarantee. But, I mean, what a life he lived He was one of the true tough guys in wrestling. He had the credibility. He was tough as nails and just had a lot of great matches and a lot of great feuds with guys like Ivan Koloff and superstar Billy Graham. And some of those matches are on the WWE Network. They actually have a Bruno San Martino collection for anybody out there that's curious about it. Definitely worth checking out. It is a different style from today, but still, like you guys said, without Bruno, there's no Hulk Hogan. There's no Steve Austin, and there's no no DQ.com. So there's, there's no no DQ without Bruno. Yep, absolutely. Yep, and w- and with Bruno, that's when a lot of people thought wrestling to be a sport. You know, that was before the, the entertainment era. Yeah. Yep. So none, you know, nonetheless, rest in peace. And it just it sucks. This type of stuff sucks. So I got to be careful with my segue here on some of our topics. So we're gonna go to the superstar shakeup right now. Sounds good to me. All right, and so Raw obviously got some more talent, but I think, personally, SmackDown won from the talent pool. Now, we know in the past when SmackDown looked like they had a really good roster, it seems like it lasts for so long, and then all of a sudden something happens and a bunch of people go back to Raw. So let's start with Raw first. I'm going to bring up Owens and Zayn. So we knew they were going to go there because they got fired from SmackDown. I find it interesting that Michael Cole is such an idiot that he, that he said, oh, they were fired from WWE. Look, in sports, if, if you want to act like wrestling is a sport, free agents, all that, you know, uh, somebody could leave a team and another team can pick them up after they clear waivers. So Michael Cole, I think Coachman actually slapped him silly verbally, so to speak. I don't know if anybody caught that on Raw. But, like, Cole was like, no, there's no way these guys can be here. That, come on. So let's start with Owens and Zayn, and we're going to bring Jinder. I, we'll do these in bunches. I was kind of shocked to see Jinder jump ship and then defend the U.S. title right away to Jeff. Now it all makes sense. So, Aaron, I want to start with you. Owen Zane, fresh start on Raw, and Jinder Mahal, we know that's your boy. Oh, yeah, that's my boy. All right. <laughs> um, Owens and Zane, I think, is definitely the biggest plus for Raw, and I think it does make sense with Stephanie McMahon overruling Kurt Angle. That aspect of it I liked, and... I mentioned this on No DQ Live. I loved the segment with Owens, Zayn, and The Miz when they were all jumping up and down, hugging each other. That was fantastic. I'm so sad that 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 group has been split up already, but maybe we'll see 
Curtis Axel and Bo Dallas form a faction with Owens and Zayn. That might be fun and keep that going because I think there's some potential there. Those guys all seem to have the chemistry. And I miss I miss a really strong heel faction in WWE. So I'm hopeful that Owens and Zayn can maybe start some sort of super group in WWE and, and run roughshod over the guys like Roman Reigns and Braun Strowman. I mean, with Braun Strowman, you need you need a strong group against him. So I think that might be the answer to that. And Jinder Mahal, I feel like Jinder Mahal is just going to go into the mid-card. He's going to be in mid-card hell at best. And if things don't work out for him, he can always reform 3MB now with Heath Slater and Drew McIntyre. So, yeah, Jeff, you're shaking your head. Your thoughts on Jinder Mahal. First of all, they had McIntyre come in with Ziggler. It's not going to happen for MB. I'd love to see it just for just for the heck of it, for fun, but it, it, I don't think it's going to be a long term thing. Um, I kind of disagree with you on Jinder Mahal, Aaron. I think they're going to they're going to give him a shot here because you know, he he got to carry the proverbial ball. Yes, we all hated him as WWE champion. Yes, he won the U.S. title, and we were miffed about that at WrestleMania. But the fact is, he's getting a rematch of the Greatest Royal Rumble, which we'll talk about, I'm sure, at a later date, and. Um, he may just win the thing back and really, you know, and maybe we'll see him uh, carry that or maybe he'll, or maybe like you said, maybe he'll go into mid card. Hell, I I'd like to see them do something just to, you know, just prove that, prove us wrong, prove us wrong and say, well, you know, we're going to give gender a shot here. Probably not going to happen, but you know, Here's the thing. Anything can happen in WWE, like they always said. As far as Owens and Zayn, I love, love, love they got a shot. I don't so much love the whole, well, you know, this is my revenge to Kurt Angle for beating us at WrestleMania. Here's Owens and Zayn to deal with. It's like that That seems almost like they couldn't find anything better to write it in. So here, here's this. Here's this little nugget. Here we go. Let's just do this so I can – I'm still here. I'm the commissioner. Look at me. It's like, it's, well, you're not there, Stephanie, and neither you, Hunter. You're off TV again after Mania because you lost again. So just stay away. But it's cool they're back. I'm happy they're back. I love to see – Aaron Branson that's a good point. I like to see them kind of maybe make – uh, Axel and Dallas, they're they're uh, they're lackeys. That'd be fun to watch. Yeah, keep them busy. What do you think, Tyler? Yep. <clears throat> well, uh, I actually agree with Jeff on the whole Stephanie overruling Kurt thing, um, because explain to me this: Owens and Zayn got fired because they beat up Shane McMahon, and Shane McMahon was upset with them because they beat up Vince McMahon. So why would Stephanie? Like to be like, okay, sure, you beat up my dad. Come on, join the roster, guys. Like, right. I don't, I don't get that. But nonetheless, I think Owens and Zayn are a tremendous addition to Raw. Um, they, like Aaron said, they had excellent chemistry with the Miz, Taraj, and the Miz. And I just love this whole Yep movement thing they have going. The way that Sami Zayn read that email was just tremendous because he's he's he reminds me a lot of Enzo. He's like the guy that you just want to punch in the face. Because he's, he's annoying you. He's hyper. It's like he's had so much coffee. And, uh, you know, when they were jumping up and down, it was just great. Um, and I'm hoping that they uh, join the tag division. Because uh, I'd like to see them as a full-fledged tag team. I know that they're great as singles guys. But I'd really like to see them be tag champs at one point. And as far as gender goes... <sighs> Uh, I mean, how could anyone say SmackDown lost the shakeup? They got rid of gender. Yep. That's uh, that's pretty much all I have to say about that. Oh my uh, goodness. I'm I'm not sure where he's gonna go. I mean, he just lost the U.S. title to Jeff Hardy, and um, you know, maybe maybe it won't be Roman that beats uh, Brock, but it'll be gender. Who knows? <laughs> I think you know. I think Jinder Mahal is gonna be my Roman Re virtues. Roman Reigns. I'm gonna fall my sword for that guy. I swear, because I'm the only so one who doesn't care. I, I like the guy. For I some don't... reason, too, because I've changed my philosophy. I've even retracted on Cena. And now I support Cena. Exactly. It's something about. And look, I'm not trying to be the guy that likes what WWE force feeds, but it's like give WWE a chance to make these guys something because. Who says that the guys they feud against won't become some of your all-time favorites? And it takes two to tango. And I, I, I'm looking at gender the same way as you are, Jeff. Now, I think he came to Raw simply for fodder, something to do for Roman Reigns on Raw. On Raw as like an upper mid card and Braun Strowman. Because he is that heel that you like to see get beat up. And Roman Reigns and Braun Strowman are guys that need to have somebody like that to beat up. So to me, gender going raw made perfect sense. Now, before I go on, did you have something else to say, Jeff? 
I did. Yes, no. you did. <laughs> of, course, of course I did. Um, <laughs> you, you, you mentioned Roman, excuse me, you mentioned Jinder Mahal going to build the other guys up. Think about The Rock. When he turned heel in 97, nobody gave him a chance. They just crapped on him. They put him with Steve Austin, who's the biggest star in the company, and boom, he takes off. Yeah, well, if they do something different with Jinder, that might work. Right. But if he keeps doing the same thing he's been doing with Samir Singh interfering in all of his matches and Jinder just plays the stereotypical foreign heel, <laughs> then I feel it's going to have a very limited shelf life and he's going to be at a certain level and that's it. Uh, I, I definitely agree with that. You know, the, the Don't whole, hinder gender based on the creative writing, you know? Well, I, I, unfortunately, you know, the, the whole heel, you know, the, the foreign heel played out, you know, when Sergeant Slaughter turned heel in, 91, in 1990. So it, 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 ever since then, it's been like, okay, whatever. Yeah. So. And I agree with you, TJS. I think Zayn and Owen should be a tag team. I can see the uh, Woken Warriors winning those tag titles, especially now that um, Cesaro and Sheamus are on SmackDown. Them being the tag champs, that would be a perfect opportunity. I'd love to see that feud with Zayn and Owens oh, yeah. against the Broken Universe. I again, that would be great. That sports entertainment, give me some of that. So, all right, let, there's a lot of – I'm not going to talk about everybody. Obviously, there's jobbers that came to Raw. Brazongo, Mojo Rawley, Mike Kanellis, which is – he just basically been nothing yet. I, I think he had some demons and injuries to take care of first. Ascension, Zack Ryder. Okay, they're all on Raw. Look, Let's look at the women. The Riot Squad come over, all three of them, and Natty. Natty, Jeff, I want to start with you on this. This is interesting because they're making her buddy-buddy with Rousey. Is this going exactly like I think this is going to go? Explain your thoughts on Riot Squad and Natty, especially being friends with Rousey. It's 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 very hard to decipher. I mean, you think about it. You know, They needed to do something with Absolution to have them – be written off and they basically had Ronda write them off by beating them up and now they're on SmackDown, which we'll get to, I'm sure momentarily, but you know, Natty's going to need help if she's on raw because you know, the, 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 the primary uh, women on raw now are um, Sasha and Bailey who are kind of an island to themselves as far as feuding goes. And then you've got uh, the riot squad now who are a, a, a three, three person team. So they have to have somebody with Natty to, so she's not completely just gobbled up. And I think, I, I honestly, I love Natty, and we all know I love Natty. I've talked about her from from the beginning, and she's she, she's my she's my one A besides Charlotte. But I think they're giving Natty something to do, and they're giving Ronda something to do to kind of pass the time until they get something better for Ronda to do. And right now, that's protecting Natty. Now, Tyler, I'll pass it to you. Don't you think that maybe they're going to have Natty work closely with Ronda and then do that? Hey, hey, we're friends. We're friends, and then Natty turns. So they can maybe that could be Ronda's first true pay per view match against a, a worker. I mean, Stephanie, no disrespect, but I, I think I could see one match at least on a pay per view with Rousey and Natty because Natty can carry her. TJS? Uh, yep, I agree completely with that. Um, <clears throat> I think Natty is a great first person to work with, like you said. Uh, if you watch the NXT matches she had with Charlotte Flair, mm -hmm. tremendous stuff. Um, and I think that Natty was really overshadowed on SmackDown by uh, Naomi and Becky and, uh, you know, the other women there. Um, so I think eventually we're going to see Natty versus Ronda. Uh, I think it's interesting um, that they um, are doing this because I kind of was expecting Ronda to be a part-timer. But no, I mean, when they said full-time, I guess they meant it because she's been showing up uh, at every Raw so, and she's booked for the European tour, so that's interesting. And um, I'm guessing that we're going to see that match at SummerSlam. Uh, as far as um, as far as the Riot Squad moving over, uh, I expected it honestly. Uh, not sure that they're going to do very much, but um, you know, we'll see what happens. Uh, Aaron, what do you think? Riot Squad don't care. They're just basically going to get beat up by Ronda Rousey, most likely. And I've said this before. I think. I think Ruby Riot needs new music. I really don't like who, that music for a, a heel character. I don't think who has the worst all. music, Aaron, uh, Ronda or Riot Squad. I don't mind Ronda's song. I mean, Ronda's song is from that's Joan Jett, isn't that, it? That's what she used in UFC, right? Yeah. Right, yeah. But. With disrespect the 80s. I was born. That was my decade. See, I don't mind it. I know. I know a lot of people don't like like her using that song. I think that's fine. I like using the classic songs for entrance themes. I just think Ruby Wright needs a new song. Um, Natalia being on Raw is great. I think that her and Ronda will have a solid feud, and 
Um, Ronda Rousey was trained mostly by Natalia last year, so they, they are very familiar with each other, and I think that they'll have a really good, solid singles match. I'm looking forward to it. Whether it happens at SummerSlam or if it happens at Backlash, that remains to be seen. But I, I would think that WWE would spread it out a little bit and not have Ronda appear at every single show. I think she should be more like Brock Lesnar when it comes to her schedule, where she comes in and does maybe five or six pay-per-views out of the year. I don't think she should do something as soon as Backlash. I think that they should slowly build it up. Maybe they'll do another tag match with Ronda and Natalia and then split them up and do a singles match at SummerSlam. That's how I think it should go. What do you think, Virtue? Wouldn't that be something if Ronda was in the Money in the Bank match? <laughs> anyway. There you go. We're gonna be we're gonna be there. Yeah. Uh, you know here here's the thing, Jeff. The Riot <laughs> Squad and Absolution, it no difference, you know. So it made sense why they did that because Paige is now the GM on SmackDown and maybe they can still use her music. So like Aaron said, I don't care about the Riot Squad. It's just more heels to, you know, do chicken crap heel stuff and powder out. That's uh, my- uh, I was going to say, when you think about it, the, the baby faces on Raw, you know, Bailey or Sasha go baby face to heel week to week. You never know where the hell either one is going to be at this point. Mm-hmm. And then you get the Riot Squad who are definitive heels. And then the, the baby faces right now is Natty and, of course, Ronda. So, you know, it, it, they have to balance out the show. In theory, they have to. But, you know, Vin, Vince is never one for, in theory, anything. So. <laughs> And I, and I like the whole mentoring thing, so I'm interested to I see. Even, even if it's yep. just small clips on Raw the next couple months with Natty and Ronda, I, I'm really anxious to see that. Um, so good for Natty to get more publicity as a wrestler being exactly. paired with Ronda. All right, so the next chunks I want to – I'm looking at uh, key points of interest here. Baron Corbin, Chad Gable, and Bobby Roode. Those are the three I want to talk about next. Aaron, I'll start with you. Any thoughts – on, on Corbin, Gable, and Rude, and will any of them make an impact <laughs> on Raw? See how I did that? I see how you did that. Bobby Rude, I think, should turn heel. I think the time is now to turn him now that he's on Raw. I feel like he needs that shake up. It seems like the glorious chant is starting to fizzle out. I think it's time to do something different with him and, and give him that heel run. As far as Chad Gable goes, I could see him possibly reuniting with Jason Jordan. Other than that, I have no idea what Chad Gable is going to do. I think he's going to get lost in the shuffle very quickly unless he teams up with Jordan again. Maybe he ends up on 205 Live. Who knows? Um, Baron Corbin. Now, Baron Corbin, I think, will get the Roman Reigns feud. I think that's more likely than Jinder Mahal getting it. I think Baron Corbin will initially get a push, and he'll be feuding with the likes of Roman Reigns and maybe Braun Strowman. Remember, uh, Royal Rumble 2017, wasn't it Baron Corbin that eliminated Braun Strowman? Correct me if I'm wrong on that. So I could I could right. definitely see that as the next big feud for Strowman, Strowman versus Corbin. Um, Jeff, what do you think? I love that Baron Corbin's on the, if you want to call it the A show, but it is Monday night, it is Raw is the is the flagship show of WWE because we love Baron Corbin in this house. That's my son's favorite wrestler. We like Baron. People are crap on me for liking Baron, but I like him. Um, Chad Gable is interesting because I think he would have been better off on permanently on 205. I don't, I don't know how much he weighs. Like, does anybody know his weight off the top of their head? Um, but uh, six. Right. Yeah. So uh, it's it, it may it may have worked, but I think I think he's too uh, he thinks he's too uh, bulky to be a cruiserweight. But, you know, may, maybe he'll get a chance on Raw. The fact of the matter is th- both of his tag teams have broken up. But maybe just maybe <laughs> when Jason Jordan comes back from injury, they'll put American Alpha back together. Let, let's hope for, let, let's hope for Chad Gable's sake. That's the case. As far as Bobby Roode, I think the only person that still chants the glorious song every single week when he comes out is me, because I am I sing that song at the house. I drive my family crazy. Um, but I noticed at SmackDown we were there in February, Don and I. I noticed it wasn't as loud as it was at the NXT show when we went in the end of 2016. Yeah. So, like Aaron said, it is it is tapering off slow but sure. I think if they turn him heel now or close to now, it'll be really awesome to see him go. You know, maybe for the Intercontinental title, maybe have him and Rollins feud. That'd be an awesome feud. I'd love to see those two guys go. Uh, so, yeah, I, I agree with Aaron's points pretty much. Uh, again, Chad Gable, he needs a partner. He, he's not he's not the standalone guy. Right. You know what I think, Jeff? I think Chad Gable is going to be there. And then, like you said, if Jordan comes back and they really didn't like the direction of Angle's son, 
put them back together because guess who else is still on Raw? What's that other tag team they've done crap with, but had they had a great Revival. 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 Yep. So Revival. I'm going to pass yep. this off to you now, TJS. Thoughts on Corbin, Rude, and Gable. And, and do you like Gable just kind of being there for the Jordan, the reunification of American Alpha, just in case? I don't understand why everyone doesn't love Chad Gable, because this guy is great. If you saw his matches with Rusev and Kevin Owens, this guy is just awesome. And his NXT matches uh, with American Alpha, the Revival, DIY, it was just incredible. And I think a lot of people have been sleeping on Chad Gable, and I don't know why, because this guy is just awesome. I think that he can be a single star or a tag team, but if it was up to me, I'd definitely pair him back up with Jordan, because American Alpha was my favorite tag team when they were together. They were just so fluent and smooth in the ring. Loved it. And uh, Jordan really doesn't have the charisma of Gable, and Gable doesn't really have the power of Jordan, so they mesh well together. As far as Corbin goes, um, I think uh, he's going to do big stuff on Raw. Um, I think, uh, you know, he's the big tall guy that Vince loves. Uh, he's like six foot eight. I could see him feuding with, uh, with Braun, like you guys said. I'd love to see Roman Reigns versus Baron Corbin. I think that would be great. And uh, as far as Bobby Roode goes, a heel turn is so long overdue with this guy. Um, ever since he came to SmackDown after, you know, the Raw or the SmackDown after Mania last year, I, I just wanted him to turn heel because I think the glorious thing is played out because he'd been doing it for so long in NXT as a heel. I just got bored of it. So I think that Roode should be the one coming out to no music and not Ziggler. I think that would draw tremendous heat because they'd want to do the glorious thing. And I think before he goes for the glorious DDT, when he's building up for the glorious, to just stop, kick the guy in the gut, and then do the DDT. That would get him heat. I think it would be great. Uh, what do you think, Virtue? All right. So to me, when I th- I don't know. For some reason, Corbin being on Raw, I see him mixing it up with like Rollins and Balor. I don't know why. Hmm. I just I, I don't know why. That intercontinental title stuff. Um, as for Gable, I just said what I think that they, you know, they should do with him. Rude is the interesting one here for me. I can see, and it's going to segue into talking to the, about the last two guys and Dolph Ziggler and Drew McIntyre. I don't know why I could see this becoming more of a super group on Raw, faction, a stable, which we really don't have these days in WWE. And I could see Rude turning heel and joining them, and everyone's like, what? McIntyre, Ziggler, and Rude together? What's going on? And that, Again, this is just me being wishful thinking, and maybe if I was a WWE writer, I'd pitch an idea like that because we have three hours every week of Raw. Give us something interesting. So who knows? For all we know, it could be Rude feuding against uh, Rollins and Balor, the Intercontinental title. We, you know, we don't know. But that's why they call it the shakeup. So, Aaron, I'll start with you. Last thoughts. We, I didn't know if you uh, – did you bring it up, Jeff, on Ziggler and McIntyre? I don't. I said, okay, so Aaron and TGS, what's your thoughts on Ziggler and McIntyre? I thought that was the big game for Raw, both of them, because they're together. Maybe. Aaron, do you want to go? Oh, yeah, yeah, you go. Okay. Um, yeah, I think there's some potential with those guys. It definitely gave me a Shawn Michaels, Kevin Nash vibe the two of them together. So you said maybe, but yeah, you compared them to, you, you did that vibe about Diesel and HBK. So explain to me. Well, explain I, to the no DQ galaxy. I think there's big shoes to fill because Kevin Nash and Shawn Michaels had a lot of charisma as a team. Uh, Drew McIntyre is a very good wrestler and so is Ziggler, but both of them have really um, struggled, especially Ziggler in recent years. McIntyre just came back and has a little bit of momentum coming off of NXT until he got hurt. Uh, so we'll see if the pairing of them can get them to the next level or not. Maybe um, set a fire in Ziggler's ass and he'll he'll. What get is Ziggler struggled at? I know people are watching this video right now, wondering what besides booking. This guy goes out and gives everything in the ring. Yeah. What what is he struggling at then? Uh, that's a great question, Jeff. You want to take Jeff? this? He's struggling with the people, the writers trying to find something for him to do because he's he's one of those guys where he's so talented. He 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 would have been great in Bruno's era had it been smaller guys because he doesn't need a whole lot of storyline nonsense behind him. He's just good in the ring. He is he thinks he's this generation Shawn Michaels. As far as in ring work, it's hard to argue with that. But is the that fact the of the matter- problem. 
Is that the problem? Is that rubbing people the wrong way? Well, I'm sure it is. I'm sure him comparing himself to Shawn Michaels at every as every turn is not uh, uh, catering favor with anybody in the the locker room or in the office for that matter. But again, that's just me assuming. I'm guessing. What do I know? But um, I think that Dolph Ziggler is one of the most talented, if not the most talented guy I've seen. You know, since he came in as Dolph Ziggler, and they've built him, and they've built, and they've built him up, and now he kind of hit that peak when he cashed the money in the bank. That was the loudest pop I've ever heard on the Raw after Mania in my life when he cashed in on Alberto and won the World Championship. And he hasn't been hot since then. Yeah, well, remember Survivor Series 2014? He had that big win where he was the sole survivor, and then that went nowhere too. Well, that's what I'm saying. He had that big win. He he defied the authority. Sting, of all people, helped him you know, defeat the authority once and for all. And then they brought him back, and it was useless. Yeah, pretty much. So, you know, Dolph, Dolph has been elevated. elevated and then, oh, never mind. We don't want you anymore. And then, and then it, it, it happens over and over again. It's so – it's got to be frustrating for him. Does one of you yes. own a bird, by the way? <laughs> I don't. Not me. Virtue? You're smiling. No. No, uh, you know what, bird. Aaron? Aaron, my, my my window back here is open. I'm sorry, I forgot about that. The birds. Sorry about that. Okay, that's okay. Follow the buzzards. <laughs> if, it, if it was buzzards, it'd be funnier. All right. No, well, I, we're gonna pass it, it on. So it's we're gonna pass it on to Bray. We're gonna pass it on to Bray. Bray, what are your thoughts on <laughs> Ziggler and Drew McIntyre? God, I cannot unsee this. Well, now. I'll tell you the problem. With- <laughs> the problem with Dolph Ziggler is he needs to evolve. That's the same problem Randy Orton has. He's been coming out to the same music for the better part of a decade. It's just I'm tired of he's been work, he's had this the same hair. He died at once, got it cut. He was with Vicky Guerrero, didn't make much of a difference. He's been using the same moves. He started using the super kick, whatever. I mean that's not helping his case as far as people you know crapping on him because he's comparing himself to HBK. It's not doing him any favors. And this whole record scratch thing, drop it. Why? Why is he? I don't understand. I just don't get it. Because uh, the music still plays. Yeah. I, I don't get it. And mm-hmm. the guy's not really getting. No one cares about him. That's the problem. He's not getting any heat. And the guy is so good. He's talented. Like Jeff said, he's great. But the problem is the way that he's been booked. And it doesn't help when he goes on Twitter and says that he's been held down or whatever. That just makes him look unprofessional. So if I was Dolph Ziggler, uh, I'd be ready. You know, just. Change things up. When he uh, relinquished the title a couple months back, he should have been kept off TV, and he should have won the Rumble. I mean, in retrospect, maybe not. But if they were going to do that whole disappearing angle, they should have had him win the Rumble instead of just entering 30 and getting eliminated almost immediately. Ridiculous. Uh, As far as this Drew McIntyre thing goes, I'm personally not a huge fan of Drew, but uh, maybe the two of them together will be good. Uh, I mean, it's... I think it's going to elevate Dolph more than it is Drew, personally, because it, it keeps Dolph relevant instead of just being the guy to put over younger talent. So that's just what I thought. Well, and they need great writing, and I'm going to give everybody fantasy booking virtue 101 right here. So what do you do with a Ziggler and a Drew McIntyre, putting them together like this on Raw? For something over the summer, advertise Degeneration X. For whatever reason, I don't know if they have a show in Texas coming up, but advertise DX, Sean and Triple H. Hype it out a week, two weeks ahead of time. That night when it happens, the music hits. But who walks through that curtain? It's Dolph Ziggler and Drew McIntyre mocking D-Generation X. You want to give them some heat. You, again, you got players right for these players, and I'm sure we're going to be talking about that big time now on SmackDown because that's been SmackDown's problem. You have talent, but you don't write to its ceiling. So here's the big three. Samoa Joe is now on SmackDown. We knew about The Miz which I found it interesting that he was not there. And then Jeff Hardy brings the U.S. title back over. So what is everybody's thoughts on Samoa Joe, Miz, and Jeff Hardy now being on SmackDown? TGS, I will start with you. And were you upset that The Miz was technically not on SmackDown? It was a pre-tape. Well, I actually heard uh, that most of the Raw roster was uh, going somewhere to do some shows uh, overseas. Yeah. I don't know how true that is, uh, but yeah. maybe The Miz was advertised for those shows, and maybe that's where he was. So, I mean, maybe if he was going to be on SmackDown, he shouldn't have gone to those shows. Uh, I don't know. Um, I think that saving his return for next week uh, gives us a little bit of a hook to tune in, you know. 
So uh, I'm okay with it, I guess. I mean, he got booed when he said that he wasn't going to be there. So, I mean, I think we all expect him to run in on the main event, and he didn't. So, I mean, I guess I'm okay with it. And, well, Tyler, uh, you, very- you, kind of, you know what I think there with The Miz? He got the crap kicked out of him and embarrassed again on Raw. So maybe they kept him off TV for a week because WWE's philosophy, everybody forgets. Yep. Right? Yeah. I mean, that was silly the way they wrote him off Raw. But, all right, yeah. go ahead. I had to mention it. Oh, uh, well, you know, uh, as, for Samo- as far as Samoa Joe goes, huge, huge pick for SmackDown. Just imagine the matches. Joe versus, a- or Joe versus AJ. Joe versus Daniel Bryan. Joe versus Nakamura. Just, it's going to be good. I think this guy is going to go far on SmackDown. And I think that he's going to be WWE champion um, probably by the end of the summer. That's a bold prediction I'm making right here. Um <clears throat> And I loved his uh, his squash match with Sin Cara. Joe is so underrated on the mic. Incredible stuff. Um, and the other one uh, that moved over to SmackDown was Jeff Hardy. No surprise for me. Uh, I expected it. I'm glad they split him and Matt up. I really didn't want to see the whole Brother Nero thing. I think Jeff is better being Jeff uh, because he has... Uh, he has, he's more marketable than Matt was before this whole broken thing. So I think it's good that they split him. Um, so, um, well, yeah, Aaron, Bray, because you have Jeff Spot now with Matt. I get that's it. That's right. That's right. We're winning the tag championships a week from tomorrow, Greatest Royal Rumble. So uh, it's going to nice. be good stuff, man. Yeah, Aaron, what do you think? I, I think you made some very awesome points there that I pretty much agree with you on 100%. Uh, Samoa Joe has been on fire with his promo work, and I feel like he can be the top heel on SmackDown if given the opportunity. And I think he will be given the opportunity. I think I think Joe's going to be one of the top stars. This is going to be his break, breakout year unless he gets hurt. Hopefully that doesn't happen. He's had those two injuries that have set him back. As long as he doesn't get hurt again, I think this is going to be a huge year for Joe, and he could potentially, like you said, maybe win the WWE title later this year. Um, As far as The Miz goes, I'm cool with his return being saved for next week. There was already plenty of things happening on this week's SmackDown. Give us something next week to look forward to and make The Miz the centerpiece of next week's show. I I think it's a good move. And um, the third person, Jeff Hardy, I like it too. I think it makes sense with the momentum that Bray Wyatt and Matt Hardy have as a team. They really don't need Jeff at this point. And like you said, TJS, uh, Jeff is very marketable as himself, and he could potentially be one of the top baby faces. And think about this, Jeff Hardy versus AJ Styles in the WWE ring. That's another possibility. And Jeff Hardy versus Samoa Joe. There's a lot of interesting matchups on SmackDown, which is why I definitely feel that SmackDown won this whole thing. Jeff, your thoughts? I think SmackDown getting The Miz back is good because the Daniel mm-hmm. Bryan feud, no question about that. I think SmackDown getting Samoa Joe is the biggest pick of the year yeah. for the Superstar Shakeup. There is no question about that. Aaron, you mentioned him against AJ. Him against uh, him against uh, uh, somebody mentioned uh, Joe and Bryan. I think it was Tyler. Yeah. Aaron and I saw those matches back in the day. We saw Brian and AJ. We saw Joe and Brian. We saw Joe and AJ. So seeing those again, they'd be like, yay, we get to see these again. Um, but at a, a WWE stage scene, those three guys who have been arguably the best three, you know, along with Christopher Daniels when he was in TNA as well, those four guys have been, you know, the, the, the best in-ring workers not signed with WWE at the time. Now they're all under the WWE umbrella, and they're all, and you know, and Nakamura's there too. They're all on SmackDown now. Holy crap! We're gonna have an uh, unbelievable blue brand, and I think they're really gonna start. It's funny. I was I was watching rewatching the Paul Hammond documentary, and he mentioned that you know SmackDown was the only show besides Nitro to beat Raw at everything, including writing. Can you imagine if they actually got their writing team's head out of the proverbial butts and wrote for Joe and AJ and Brian and Mitt and all these guys that are there now? Holy crud! Would they be awesome? Absolutely. Well, and and think about what do you like Jeff Hardy the way he came out like on SmackDown he he interrupted Orton's entrance and then Orton just walked away. So uh, I like continuity. So you you know what I want to see next week on SmackDown? I want to see Orton whether he turns heel or he's just Randy Orton RKO out of nowhere do something to Jeff Hardy yep. for taking your spotlight. And again, is the writing team going to see these things? Aaron, as you mentioned, I want to see the Miz be featured on an entire episode. Talking trash, talking down to Daniel Bryan. There's just so much. And then, of course, all the matches you guys mentioned with Joe. 
Uh, I still think Joe has some very good heated promos, but I don't until he's officially paired up against somebody and he doesn't, you know, switch brands because the he had the thing going with Roman and then he switches brands. I'm not going to buy into him being this great promo guy yet, but I am going to give him the benefit of the doubt. He delivers him with passion. Uh, I have a I have a thing where like AJ is guilty of this too, where they say you see you see, but I mean, Aaron and I were talking about that. I go um, uh, we all have those comfort words. Yeah. The true professionals though, they got to learn to not do them. But anyway, Jeff, did you have another thought? Well, on I was this? gonna say you know m- m- mine is now. See, here's the thing that that's my go to. Yeah, um, it's on a shirt for Christ's sake. And they got uh, big bright lights on them. I'm sure it's a hell of a lot harder. Exactly. People seem to forget. I don't know if anybody in this room will remember, but Jeff Hardy and Orton had a feud of the title uh, about ten year, almost ten years ago now. So right. actually, ten years ago now because Orton was a champion in the end of 07 and Jeff was his feud going into the Rumble that year. Yeah. So you know it, it has happened. Will the Ryan team remember that? Of course not, because they're not. They're, they, they, they want us to forget. Right. But it'd be cool to see, like you said, Virtue Orton come out and go. Really, you interrupt me? Boom. Good night. Well, that yep. that's what I would expect to happen. I would expect Randy Orton to turn heel, which is something that he's been wanting to do for a long time. I think that that's definitely the right direction for that. Um, yep. I just said um again. You know what? I I do that's like all it. Good, I do like it because it 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 makes the whole segment feel a little bit more authentic. If they are too perfect with their lines, yep. then it feels very scripted. I like when they throw in the ums and gives it a little bit more of a realistic vibe to it. Just my take on it. Nice spin. TGS, I I wasn't paying attention. Yes, I was. Any more thoughts on this? And if not, I want you to bring up the next couple of guys or gals from this SmackDown Superstar shakeup. So, um, Well, um, I just want to talk about uh, Big Cass really quick. Uh, I... Personally, think uh, actually, I loved the backstage segment with uh, Daniel Bryan. Thought it was awesome because you know they say that wrestling is like the land of the giants. So you have this seven foot tall big cast saying, "You're what all the fuss is about, little man." You. So I think that big cast and the Miz should be paired up. And what's the big feud right now? They want Daniel Bryan and the Miz to wrestle. I think the Miz should say, "You have to go through big cast first. And then, you know, have uh, have Daniel Bryan have some matches with Cass. And then, uh, you know, and then have Miz agree to face Bryan. But instead of Miz facing Bryan, have Bill Cass come out there again and beat up uh, Daniel. And then once Daniel finally gets his hands on the Miz, you can make that a SummerSlam match. Drag it out. Really want the, and the audience want that. And then once Daniel finally gets to get his hands on the Miz, huge pop. Could even be uh, one of the main events of SummerSlam. I think it would be great. Uh, another name moving the that I'd like to talk about uh, is The Bar. I think uh, it's good that they moved over uh, on Raw. They were looking terrible. Um, you know, they lost to the 10-year-old kid. And uh, and then they lost to Bree Zango, which I, 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 know. I have no... But it's, hey, it's, switching it's, brands, it didn't happen, right? I mean, that's probably WWE's philosophy. Yeah, I mean, the continuity just doesn't exist in WWE, unfortunately. Uh, but I think the bar switching over is going to be good for them. Um, we could have matches with the Usos. New Day, uh, New Day and Bar, you could say they have unfinished business because they did end the record-setting reign, um, but that probably didn't happen because it's WWE. Um, and um, another name that I'd like to bring up, that, or two names, that came over, uh, Anderson and Gallows. I think it's interesting that they split them up with Balor because I feel like the Balor club really never got out of uh, first gear. Uh, I think they could have had some more mileage with that, but they are on the same brand as AJ. Hopefully this rejuvenates them a little bit. Uh, we'll see what happens. Jeff, what do you think? Uh, the Bar, um, <clears throat> Anderson and Gallows, and Big Cass. Looks to me like the tag team division on SmackDown is heating up real quick. Yep. You got you got two of the best tag teams in recent memory. And by the way, Corey Graves, Balor Club. Okay, <laughs> uh, just saying. But you know what? I'll throw it up. What the hell? Oh, excuse me. One sweet. We got to do one sweet now. I forgot. We'll, 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 we'll get we'll, we'll get sued by that. Um, I I like Big Cass coming back. I like Big Cass being involved. I I think that he was on his way to something really really special when he got hurt. And I think they're gonna capitalize on that on SmackDown. I, I'm not sure about the whole Dave vs. Goliath thing with Brian, but may, maybe it'll lead somewhere beneficial for both guys. Who knows? Um, 
Gallows and Anderson was almost an afterthought. They, they were mentioned, I think it was on SmackDown later in the night, that they were just, oh yeah, by the way, they're here. But um, it was just kind of like, okay, whatever. I think if they pair either, even if it's on a full-time pairing with AJ, as long as they, you know, hook them up here and there, it'll be cool for them. It'll be cool to see Luke and Carl um, kind of, you know, do, do their thing with AJ and then also to see them get a tag team run. Usos, New Day, and The Bar all in the same brand along with Gals Anderson. SmackDown's got the tag team hot hand, it looks like to me. I agree on that, Jeff. They definitely got, got some momentum with the tag team division. We'll see if if those teams can be rebuilt, especially Anderson and Gallows. I think the exactly. bar I think the bar will rebound when they get in there with the Usos. We're gonna see the bar back to their glory days. I have no no doubt about that. Um, big Cass. Interesting. I think he should have had a different look. I think he, he should not look like the old Big Cass. And I think he had new music. I'm still not sure on that. I've had people saying, no. you're saying it's the same music. It was the same, as far as I remember. I mean, it sounded the exact same to me. I never even bothered to check which shows how little I care about it. but I'm sure people in the comments will know. It seemed like it was a little bit catchier, which isn't saying much. It just it did feel <laughs> like it was a slightly better song. I'd still he'd rather have new entrance music, new look, but whatever. It is what it is. I do like your idea, TJS, where Brian has to go through cast first to get to The Miz and save that for a big show like SummerSlam. I do like that idea. Um, but yeah, more, more great picks for SmackDown. And um, I think SmackDown definitely won it. Virtue, any final thoughts on this? I mean, I like the bar, but I also like Cesaro. And I just, they, they will never give this guy the respect he deserves with a singles career. Maybe they'll end up, I mean, didn't him and Sheamus have a few that put him together ultimately as the bar? Yeah. So I, I, don't, I wouldn't want to see them break up just a feud again. Um, and put him against you. So we'll get some great matches, I guess. As for Cass, I. TJS, boom. I like that. Make people want The Miz and Brian. Don't give it to them. Make them wait and wait and wait. That That's great. And Big Cass is perfect for that. Uh, heck, Big Cass could even go over Brian in a match because Miz could help him yeah. before Brian ultimately beats him. So, so many possibilities there. And the club, I... I kind of don't think they fit with Balor anymore because the new direction of Balor Club, if everybody gets my drift, has nothing right. to do with the guys. Right. Exactly. So, yep. I, again, and I see, I understand what WWE's doing with that, and I support it, and I hope it takes off. I really do. So it makes sense that the, the club, this version of the club, is now on SmackDown, and maybe there'll be something with AJ. All right, so I'm looking at the rest of my list here. Absolution, okay. You know, will they use Paige's music? Who knows? R-Truth, eh. Um... Here's some interesting ones right here. Some NXT call-ups. Almas with Selena Vega, or Zelina Vega, and Sanity. Talking about tag team. And how are they going to do the, but no Nikki Cross. So, TJS, I will start with you. Thoughts on, I always get his name wrong. Um, help me out with Almas. With, Andrade, Cien, Almas. I just call him Almas. Yeah, I, I can't, I can't, I can't roll the yard on Andrade. So sorry about that, Andrade. But and I do like Zelina Vega. And last time I knew, she's uh, Austin Aries' girlfriend. She, she yeah. I, I think, I think they got married. Ooh. But yeah, they, they've been oh, together for lucky, a while. Lucky, lucky, lucky man. All right, so yes. TJS thoughts. So I think it's pretty interesting that they're bringing up Zelina Vega with Almas, but they took L Ring away from AOP. I think that's interesting um, because AOP yeah, had a longer run. Cross with Sanity. Yeah, yeah, that's something else that's interesting. I'm not sure uh, why they did this, because AOP and uh, Paul Elring, they've been together since, you know, since the, the first time they won the Dusty Classic, even before that, so for like two years. Um, not sure why they did that. Um, Almas and, uh, and Vega have been together for a little bit, but not as long, and... Um, I'm not sure about it. Um, I think it's good that Almas is on SmackDown, although I'm still not sure why he was not getting his NXT title match, his rematch. Um, I guess we are just forgetting about the rematch clause in WWE now. I don't get it. Um, Sanity, uh, I think Killian Day needs to break away from him because this guy is a standout star. I know you guys uh, might not watch the weekly NXT shows, but uh, he had a great match with Lars Sullivan, uh, no disqualification match. This week, uh, very good stuff. 
Killian Dane was the VIP or the MVP of the War Games match, as far as I'm concerned. This guy, he's a big man. He he does Tope Suicidas. He does Vader Bombs. This guy, uh, and I've seen him do the Samoan drop with two people. You know, he has one on his chest, one on his shoulders. Awesome. This guy uh, could be world champion. Uh, I haven't really heard much of his promos. Uh, maybe we'll get the chance to hear it. I don't know. But like I said, I think he needs to break away. And you can have Eric Young and Alexander Wolf being on their own. Not sure why Nikki Cross isn't coming up, uh, other than the fact they need more heel women in, in NXT. Um, but some good call-ups, I think. I'm glad that we got him because the the SmackDown after Mania only had one. Uh, Aaron, what do you think? Um, yeah, I agree with you. I think Killian Dane has a lot of potential. How tall is he, by the way? Does anybody know? What's his height? He's like 6'8", six, 6'9". Six, yeah, I mean, do you think he, he's he huge. Kind of, do you think he has like a Vader vibe? Like he could be that, that type of star? Do you think he has that potential? Okay. I think so. I do. I mean, any big dude that can move, you know, do things he does these days, I, I'd be big time. I mean, think about it. Vader was revolutionary for what he could do for being so, you know, such a big guy. But, I mean, today's wrestling, it's changed. Everybody likes the Garganos and the AJ Styles. So when you're a big guy that has a pretty big repertoire and not like an, a Baron Corbin repertoire, I'm sorry, but the the ceiling might be more breakable. That glass ceiling might be more breakable. So yeah. back to you, Aaron. And let's not forget, we haven't really talked about the tag team champions, the Bludgeon Brothers, so we could possibly see Sanity versus the Bludgeon Brothers at some point. It'll be interesting to see if Sanity comes in as faces or heels. I'm really curious to see. Um, I don't think there's any clear direction yet. They just did the little vignette for those guys uh, to hype up their debut. Um, who are the other guys we were talking about? Almas and Zelina Vega. Oh, um, Almas. I'm really interested to see what happens with him. I think that he definitely has the potential to succeed, especially when WWE is trying to build up a new Latino superstar. He can definitely fill, fit that bill. Um, so time will tell with him. I'm not sure where you put him, though. Uh, that, I'm not sure. I, I could see him potentially maybe feuding with Jeff Hardy at some point for the United States title. But I think right now it's going to be Jeff Hardy and Randy Orton. Uh, so maybe Almas just wins some squash matches for a while and they just build him up that way. Um, Jeff, what do you think should be done with Almas? Where do you see him fitting in at this point? It's it's funny because I would not have expected him to be a call up. I I think like Tyler said, you know, I I guess we'll have, I forget the fact that he gets a rematch for the title because he he lost the title at Takeover. I would love to see him since he's going to be on SmackDown, which is awesome. I, again, SmackDown got a huge pick here, especially with Selena, because I think if they let Selena turn her loose and actually let her wrestle, she's one of the best wrestlers of the last you know ten years when she's able to wrestle. You know, she's she's very she is that good, believe it or not. Uh, she's and, great uh, on the mic too. She, she's great on the mic, and she she, she sells almost like gangbusters. And you know, almost is good, but he, she she makes him great. Yeah, she really does. And I think if they if they put him into a you know upper mid card feud, you know with uh, God, you know I mean really anybody, you know I, personally why why not do a a uh, a surprise one on one match him and AJ because I think him and AJ would be good as far as like okay let's see if he can be go with the champion make, make make that be his testing so to speak and and then if he if he has a good showing with AJ then they move then they move from there there you go. Now, Jeff, there's three people in Sanity since Nikki Cross didn't come over with them. Right. What else, what group on SmackDown are there three of? The New Day. There's your opening feud, Aaron. There you yeah, go. Again, go. if I was writing, but any thoughts on that or what else they should do with Sanity? Oh, goodness. Um, I, I Again, I, it's one of those things. I, I was just saying, that I believe it was with, with, uh, with one of you guys last week, that you know, I, I don't think that... Sanity is a good fit for the main roster. They're a good, they're a good uh, NXT group, but again, so was the VOD villains. I'm like, how well they did when they got called up. And English is doing good now, but he wasn't for a long time. And Simon, of course, had his issues and he got fired. So it's you know for whatever for you know again we don't know the whole story whatever. Um, I I I hope it works for EY's sake because EY deserves a. Yep. A, a, a good, decent run with WWE, but I, I have my doubts of them as a, as a unit together. Now, 
Killian Dane, that guy impresses the living crap out of me. That guy, he, he, he very much has that Vader vibe where he can do things a big man should not even remotely be able to do. The only, th- the only thing that's really going to get lost, I think, is Alexander Wolf. He he's got he's a big guy, but he's not like oh my god, he's so big and he can do these crazy things. He, he he's not that kind of superstar. Right. So I think I think if anybody's going to get lost, it'll be uh, Wolf. All right. Uh, you know, and in terms of who they all go against, like there's my thoughts. Uh, Sanity versus New Day to start out again. We'll see, Jeff, if you're right, and the dynamic of Sanity works on the main roster right. with that writing. As for Almas, I could see him feuding. I mean, let's say Jeff Hardy keeps the U.S. title, and it doesn't go back to Jinder. You know, I mean, in a scenario where Jinder wins the U.S. title, Samoa Joe wins the Intercontinental title, and they switch brands, it's right. just say for the, the titles stay where they're at. I could see Almas feuding with Jeff Hardy in a great feud. I, you you know, we'll we'll see what happens. All right, one last person on SmackDown, which was pretty inevitable. Go around the horn, TJS. I'll start with you, Oscar. And the fact that now her and Charlotte are BFFs. I I don't get it. And um, Becky. <laughs> I, 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 just, I don't understand it. Um, why would you move Oscar to the same brand as the person that she just lost her streak to? And then why would you have Oscar want to team up with her? Respect. I, why wouldn't you have why wouldn't you have Oscar come out there and just annihilate Charlotte? Just beat the living crap out of her. And then maybe you could have had the cash in from Carmella after that instead of the Iconics. You know, have Oscar come out there, act like she's going to shake Charlotte's hand, put her in the arm bar, beat her down. I don't get it. Even after the match with uh, Charlotte at WrestleMania, she said, congratulations, uh, Charlotte. You were ready for Oscar. Oscar just gave up everything that she had when she lost that streak. Where do you go with it from here? I don't know. I really don't. You're just gonna team her up with the one uh, with the lady that she lost to. I don't get it. Doesn't make any sense to me. Um, I, I'm tired of women's tag team matches. Uh, they mean nothing. They're throwaways. They're not going anywhere with them. I don't get it. Jeff, what do you think? What's Oscar gonna do on SmackDown? I I am very very worried at this point because much like my favorite guy Billy Boy, the career lives and breathes with a streak yeah she she is very very she's probably the most talented person nxt has signed si- since it's rebranding as a actual brand not as a competition show having said that i think i think this streak will ultimately hurt her a bit being lost much like it did goldberg they built it and they built it, built it and then rather than oh my god the big moment she <laughs> wins the championship th- th- they gave us the the once again the the, the new orleans uh streak uh screw job if you will the, the the big shake up oh my god the streak's over what do they do they have to have her be a champion in order for her to be truly successful just my uh, uh, excuse me a lot of people need the title the title doesn't need them she needs the title agreed on that good point aaron anything to add to that so well, wh- well, what happens if oscar is Brother. what happens if oscar is booked for a re, uh, match with carmella for the title and then something happens and oscar is accused of committing a crime and charlotte offers to take her place it's charlotte versus carmella and then finger poke of doom, Charlotte wins back the title, and her and Carmella are friends. How about? Oh that? my god! Oh my god! <laughs> no, seriously though. Um, Don't get Rose off any ideas. Seriously well, though. Hey, tell everybody know. that finger poke of doom with Kevin Nash was pre Vince Russo and WCW. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. All right. That, that, was, everybody com- that, that, that was completely Bischoff's gimmick. Don't worry about it. We know. Yeah. What, what I actually think is going to happen is, unfortunately for you, TGS, there's going to be some tag matches because the Iconics, I think their best strength right now is as a tag team. Um, as we saw on SmackDown, uh, was it Billy Kay that already lost to Charlotte in a singles match? So their, their strength is as a team. I think it's going to be Oscar and Charlotte versus the Iconics for the next month or two. And then we're going to see the split and it's going to be Charlotte and Oscar at SummerSlam. Uh, the rematch, and Asuka will probably win the rematch. They'll have a third match, maybe Survivor Series or Royal Rumble. <laughs> Charlotte will win the third match, and then it'll be Charlotte versus Ronda Rousey at WrestleMania. That, that's my future prediction for all that. Virtue. Oh, Aaron, so you bring up the Iconics. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, anybody. Peyton Royce was trained by Lance Storm, I believe. Sounds I Pey- Peyton Royce, yeah, I believe she was. 
I don't know about Billy Kay. These girls scream NXT. If there was ever a time to re-sign Emma, and like because she's Australian too, th- this group needs some credibility from a wrestling standpoint. Sorry, Iconics, you know you're you're beautiful, but uh, so with this Oscar and Charlotte team, I remember when I was at WrestleMania, I swear for a split second, Oscar said, "Shut it," instead of Charlotte, and I was Shut like. It? Yes. And that match happened before the Nakamura turn on AJ. I'm like, yes, they're turning your heel. And then I was like, what did she just say? And people were like, Charlotte. And I was like, oh, no. She needs to turn heel like Nakamura did. These ladies, you know, these Japanese that can't really speak English well, doing the, the Nakamura gimmick with, you know, speak no English, that is fantastic. That's the best thing I've seen written on SmackDown for a long time. And I'd like to see them do that. Maybe Asuka and Nakamura are heels, like like kind of just associated because they're Japanese, not that they're a group. That would be fantastic. So that's what I think they should do with Asuka, not making her BFFs with Charlotte. With that said, is everybody in agreement that SmackDown won the shakeup? Oh, hands down. Hands uh, down. I, I knew there, we don't even need to go around, and everybody pretty much <laughs> – I mean, it's given. All right, I'm going to – we're doing the main event. Jeff, I know you said you had something. We can talk about that and you know when we do a closing of the show. But this bothers the hell out of me. And I think you know where I, what I'm bringing oh, up. Oh, no. Oh, no. Virtue. I already did that. Showing the Bruno picture. I already did oh, that. Oh, yeah. You're good. Okay. You're good. You're good. You're good. This You're is good. the main event. I wasn't going to talk about you know Roman and Brock. Everybody, this this thing I'm talking about right now bothers me where I have to push Roman till next week's show. Huh. The casket match change at the Greatest Royal Rumble. So uh, we all know... Rusev said some things, TMZ, tweet, you know, everybody knows what it was. And then somebody in the office supposedly got pissed off, and Jericho was put. They actually changed the card. They changed the card to Chris Jericho. Now, you have a lot of Jericho fans out there that, you know, nothing against Rusev Day, Aaron, but, you know, everybody's like, oh, it's definite burial for Rusev. When Jericho got put into it, you, you didn't expect any different result for a casket match other than Taker winning, but you knew with it being Chris Jericho, he was going to promote the hell out, out of it on Twitter the right way. He came off of Omega Jericho, great overseas heel. As he got kicked out of Brazil. Uh, I think he pie-faced the lady in uh, Victoria, British Columbia. Yep, yep. Uh, he, he flipped a table in Japan in the Omega press conference. It hit some photographers. I don't know, maybe they were workers. Jericho is so great. As a heel overseas, they gave it to me for 24 to 48 hours. And now it's back to Rusev. What's everybody's thoughts of WWE? Can't just, if there was a problem with Rusev, why did they even change the match? They should have left it like it is. Handle business behind closed doors. Make sure Mark was okay with Rusev instead of changing it and then, and then going back. This drives me nuts because I did a whole video on Jericho and Taker. Now it's gone. They took it from me. WWE is trolling me with The Undertaker. They didn't even give me a full match at WrestleMania with Cena. Tyler, I'm going to start with you. What's your well, thoughts on that? I'm, uh, I don't know. Uh, it's having me, it has me scratching my head as well. Um, I mean, we all know that Undertaker's not going to lose his own match. So, And it's like you said, Jericho is such a great overseas heel. I think of his new Japan work when he... Uh, put the walls of Jericho on Red Shoe's son. Uh, he was, uh, he called one of the fans a um, an F face. Um, just a great heel, but the question is, is Jericho really going to get booed? Um, I know it's in Saudi Arabia, and maybe they're not very familiar with uh, the New Japan work, but I think everyone's dying to see Jericho after he had that big match with Omega. Uh, we saw him on Raw 25 in a backstage segment, and uh, he had he got such a big pop, and I think when he left, um, you know, when he got written off, he was leaving as a babyface. So I think bringing him back as a heel wouldn't make much sense. Right. Then again, you have Rusev, who should be a babyface, but for some reason uh, they're insulting the towns that they're in, which just doesn't make any sense. It's like the opposite uh, of Roman Reigns. Roman should be a heel, and they push him as a face. Rusev should be a babyface. They push him as a heel. Exactly. It, it just doesn't make sense. It, it's like WWE has to say, hey, this guy's a heel. You're supposed to boo him. Yep. That's what it, it feels like they're sticking that in our face. Like, boo this man. Like, I, I don't get it. Um, as far as the changing goes, um, 
I heard about the TMZ thing. I read something on NoDQ.com um, about uh, it was just a Vince thing. Vince changed his mind and then changed it again. Right. Maybe this is an all-in storyline. Maybe Rusev. Um, they got me. Was, then they got me. Yeah. They got me, TJ. <laughs> they got me. Maybe, maybe Rusev is going to be the next Daniel Bryan. I know that's a long shot, but you heard the Rusev Day of Chance. When Shane McMahon was cutting a promo once, he said, duly noted, very sarcastically. They edited out the Rusev Day chance of a YouTube video from last week. And you have Rusev in, a, uh, in literally a casket match. So he's he could be literally getting buried. So maybe you have the fans wanting to resist, you know, wanting to chant for Rusev Day. And WWE is purposely holding him back. Maybe they're saving for a big championship match like you're supposed to get at Money in the Bank last year. Who knows? Uh, Aaron, what do you think? That would be hilarious if WWE was actually purposely booking Rusev like this as a way to get the fans even more behind him. But the thing is, at some point, it's going to die off. Look at Zack Ryder. Eventually, Zack Ryder just completely cooled off, and I feel like the same thing is going to happen to Rusev unless something changes and changes soon. Um, I would have I would have liked Jericho versus Rusev because it was a legend versus legend. And Jeff, you might know more about this than me. Um, I don't think they've had that many singles matches against each other. And I think I read somewhere that they've never had a singles pay-per-view match. Do you know if that's accurate or not? That is 100% accurate. You remember the, the second week Jericho was in the company, he kept that promo against the Unholy Alliance and Taker and Big Show, and right. Taker immediately put him in his place. Yeah. They've kind of interacted since then here and there. As a matter of fact, Jericho pinned Undertaker for the World Championship in the chamber. Right. Yep, and he so did have a match was... against the uh, Undertaker at a SmackDown, but Edge, that was leading into that WrestleMania, Edge interfered. Right. So, right. Or no, it was and, leading into that Elimination Chamber. Yeah, I, I, I had this very distinct memory of him arguing with an old man at ringside after the Undertaker match. I just, I remember that. It was so funny. It's actually on Jericho's DVD, so there you go. Um, I would love to see Jericho in the casket match. It would have been a great Legend versus Legend, Legend versus Icon, whatever you want to call it. I think they're trolling us on purpose. I said that a week ago. I said it that they are messing with us to get this kind of reaction that we're all having right now. To have Virtue go, I got me. To have Aaron, you know, report every single thing on NoDQ.com and have so many blow ups on the thing that he gets hits for days. And oh, they don't want you to get hits for days, but that's what's happening. <laughs> and 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 you know, and they want us to talk about it. That's what they're doing. They're doing it on purpose. Yeah, yeah well if there were, if there was ever a creative position open in WWE about uh, trolling, you'd be on the creative team, but you wouldn't write the shows, but you would troll the internet on behalf of WWE. I would so take that. Position. I would I would apply I would apply for that job in a beat and I in a, in a split second, and I think I would be great at it. But anyway. Hunter's been doing it for I, 10 years. What's the difference? Uh, well, no, yeah, I know what you mean. But, like, to me, this was – if it if that's what they did, Jeff, it was well well orchestrated. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, granted, I know with 50 men in the Rumble match there, and we'll talk about this next week, I know Jericho is going to be in that match. And could somebody break – who's the record holder right now? Rey Mysterio for the longest in a Royal Rumble match, 62 minutes. Whatever, whoever, 12, it is, yep, officially. whoever it is, I think technically someone could break it. Are they going to do it at this house show pay-per-view? Well, 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 you know what? Um, they're not calling it the actual Royal Rumble chronology because they had the 40-man Rumble that was actually a Royal Rumble. This is the greatest Royal Rumble. It's out of the chron chronologically speaking of the Rumble. And I heard they might so. have a trophy, a trophy for the winner. Like, to me, the winner should go to SummerSlam. But yeah. anyway. They have great. a trophy designed for it, ready to go. Yep. <sighs> All right. So that's it. Let's do. Let's go around the horn. Anybody have anything else left to say? Topic you want to bring up or do your plugs? I'll start with you, TJS. Um. Well, um, <clears throat> I'm I'm curious what you guys think uh, about Daniel Bryan's run so far. Uh, his second run. I know it's been short so far, but to me, I think that he's looking better than he ever has. Um. I mean, before. Um. Ever since he come back. Ever since he's came back from this injury, it. He's channeling like more of his technical uh, skills, it seems like. I noticed that he's doing the surfboard a lot more. He's working the arms a lot more. He's really doing the limb psychology thing a lot more than what he was. And he just, 
I think that he's doing great, and I'm really intrigued that he's been wrestling on TV lately because I expect him to be, uh, you know, doing somewhat of a part-time schedule until WWE fully trust him. But it seems like they've thrown him right in the mix again, and um, he actually did a diving headbutt. Um, it was either this week or last week, so I think it's really, really interesting. Uh, what do you guys think about his run so far? I'll start with you, Jeff. Aaron, Aaron can vouch for me on this. We we saw Brian in his early early days of wrestling, at, at least out here anyway, and he was flat out intense. Every match, he was boom, 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 hitting everything. Then he got hurt. He tore the he, he tore the orbital socket in his eye in the match at Ring of Honor, and then he came back and he kind of slowed down a little bit. Then he came to WWE and he he's been forced to keep his style chill and grounded. But you got to remember, he's been off over two years, almost three years if you count after the, the, the WrestleMania 2015. He has been in the gym. He has been training at home. He's been doing the American Dragon training. He has not been training as Daniel Bryan. He's been doing Brian Danielson training at home and at the gym. He is in probably the best, other than the weight because he gained weight, but he's probably in the best in-ring tra- shape he's been in in many, many, probably since he joined WWE. He hasn't been tanning, though. He has not been tanning. No, he's got the Seamus look going, unfortunately. But, um, yeah, he, uh, he's, he's probably in the best shape he's been probably since 2010, 2011. Yeah, he's, he's looking good so far, but I still think it's too early to tell. I still think the jury is. is out with Daniel Bryan. But, yeah, I mean, I think it's smart for him to tone it down a little bit. And, you know, look at Shawn Michaels. When Shawn Michaels came back, he toned down his style. And some would yep. say his second run was better than his first. So I would. And this, who trained Daniel Bryan? Exactly. Shawn Michaels, there you go. Right. That, that's the point. Yeah, you so if it, if it works out for Daniel Bryan, I think his second run could definitely be better than his first. And we'll see if he, his body can hold up. And we'll see how long he can handle the schedule. It is very interesting that he is back to essentially working every single week now. We'll see how long it lasts. Hopefully it does. You know, for his sake and for the fans' sake, I hope it, it works out for him. Virtue, any final thoughts? No, you know, that's pretty much it. Uh, Daniel Bryan, that's what he wants to do is wrestle. Uh, I thought maybe he would he'd take it a lot slower and we just have some big matches, but he is right in the thick of things, probably going to be wrestling on every single SmackDown. So God bless uh, I, I'm indifferent that it's not – like, to me, it's not too much It because that's what he – how can you deny somebody wanting to do that? That's what he wants exactly. to do. He wants to work, so I'm not going to bash him for wanting to work. So that's all I got. TJS, where can people follow you at and, and all that good stuff? Oh uh, well, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at nodq underscore tjs. Uh, you can find me on Facebook at Tyler Joseph Smith. Uh, YouTube, youtube.com slash Tyler Joseph Smith. Uh, I do some WWE 2K18 videos occasionally. Haven't been uploading much. But uh, you can still subscribe to me because why not? And, uh, of course, you see Virtue wearing the NoDQ.com t-shirt, ProWrestlingTees.com. You see the beanie that Aaron, Virtue, and I are wearing. Uh, Aaron has some more of those in production. You can go ahead and email them at uh, NoDQMISC at gmail.com. Jeff is wearing a NoDQ baseball cap. Those could be coming soon. Uh, if you guys are interested in those, go ahead and let Aaron know. Um, and uh, that's all the plugs for me. Uh, Aaron, or Jeff, go ahead. Get the plugs out. I'm, not, I'm good. No. Um, <laughs> underscore Jeff, Jeff, Meacham. Jeff has always yeah, got something to plug. I always do. <laughs> underscore Jeff Meacham on Twitter and Instagram. And hopefully... If uh, if if illness does not uh, bar me like it did last week, talk wrestling will be on the youtube.com slash Jeff Meacham channel, um, hopefully. But um, I know people are ragging on me for flaking once again. But it's you when you have no voice, you can't do a talk show. As simple as that. So uh, tune in for that. Of course, tune in here each and every week for the No DQ review and Aaron's live shows Monday and Tuesday uh, after Raw and SmackDown. And uh, you never know, you might hear Jeff Meacham's voice on those shows. So tune in and find out. Be there, be square. Definitely, Mr. Be square Riff. Those shows. Well, they already did my plugs, basically. So I'll go ahead and yeah. plug your stuff, Virtue. Follow Virtue at NoDQ underscore Virtue, and every Tuesday night he does a video with Big Jeffrey. Check that out, and he's over on uh, 
Andre's site, what is it? Wrestling with Virtue? Wrestling is the name with right? Wrestling. Yeah, I, I write a little bit over there um, for him just so I can keep writing. I like doing videos for you guys. I, the No DQ Galaxy loves videos. I get way more response. That's why I stopped yep, writing. Yep, yep. However, if enough people say we want Virtue's Rage written again, you know I will. Absolutely. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's all I got. So Virtue, now you got plugs. Well, like Aaron said, follow me on Twitter at NoDQ underscore Virtue. So for Aaron Rift, for Jeff Meacham, for TJS, and for Hollywood Hogan, brother, this is a NoDQ review, and we'll see you next week.